Well, we come to an end of Indian Market number 96. We just got off the plaza interviewing a whole bunch of artists, doing a walkthrough. It is amazing the amount of artistic expression that's here in the, uh, the market itself. And everybody's kind of looking forward to Indian Market 97. Yeah. <laughs> It is incredible. But the one art that really the kids are listening to now is music. Their message uh, of Indian country really is going out through uh, the music itself. And we have now two leaders in, in, in music, the creative part of music with the Tears Project. And we have J.J. Otero with Sons of Witty. Wildy. Wildy. Yeah. Wildy. Uh, I'll keep saying it until I say it right. And we've recorded a lot of the jams that they've done uh, over the past two years or so. And yeah. uh, kind of been following uh, their creativity. Uh, missing person to this trio here now is Boy Land, who's on his way up to Wisconsin. And the boy's dream is to really get a studio going in Albuquerque where all of this incredible talent can come together and not only uh, use it as an expression, but to really create a style, a style that brings Native America together. And one of the things I've noticed, I'm a rocker from way, way, way back, probably before you were born, <laughs> is that when the beat changes, the music changes. And I've seen it over and over again, again from the 50s to the 60s to the 70s to the 90s to hip hop. And now you guys are creating a new beat. And this new beat resonates with so many people. And uh, maybe you can kind of talk a little bit about the influences that you see in your music and the audience that you're building. And uh, for Leon, myself, we're really a platform. We, we are a distributor of content. And uh, it's really an, a, an honor and a privilege to be able to be in that place. So if you can kind of just, just kind of look at, at, at how you see your audience and what why you're working so hard to get a message out. Yeah, first of all, I just want to thank you for having us having us here today. Uh, you know, where, where, I, where I see the music today in a native country, you know, we have uh, amazing talent out there. So many artists up and coming and, and so many artists that are already established. And I think something that me and JJ uh, both look to each other to do is, uh, you know, through our own entities, we, we have different projects going on. We have our bands and then we have productions that we put together when we bring bands together is ultimately to bring our community together and really highlight the talent that we have out there. So I know uh, JJ was doing Rock the Nine. He does that through the years around Gathering the Nations and he has an awesome, awesome platform there and I'm pretty sure he'll talk about it. And I do Native Guitars Tour. Uh, we had our, our third annual here in Santa Fe for Indian Market, Roots Rock for Reggae. And just you know, bringing the different genres of, of music together, and you know, throughout the country. So you know, I think where we see music, or I see music, is um, you know a place for us to express ourselves. And uh, what I, what I really try to focus on is the, the contemporary side, and leave the traditional uh, to home, and you know, keep it there. But you know, we're raised with that. We have that within us, and our music um, it, it shows and we express it as well through the contemporary side of music so um, I, I see music going in a real positive place for native country I uh, wholeheartedly agree with uh, what Jared just said um, we have different platforms and different uh, uh, opportunities uh, to uh, one of the things that Jared said to me years ago has always stuck with me is uh, he's always said that there's more than enough to go around and I think that's absolutely true um, 
like he's mentioned, he focuses on the, the contemporary stuff. And uh, for years I did Rock to Nine and with, with the idea of, of putting a focus a little bit on, um, on rock bands. Um, Jer's, Jer's uh, vehicle is the verse. He has a whole you know, variety of different uh, bands that he uh, puts, to, uh, puts together and shows and promotes. And I think it's that's very it's necessary and it's uh, it's an important thing that that Jer does. And um, I I've stopped doing Rock to Nine for for a bunch of different reasons and uh, and, and I won't go through them. But it, the space is still there for somebody to come along and say let's let's get some music together. And Jer has really has really taken. He's put his heart into getting this music out there to the masses, and I really appreciate him for that. Uh, he's done a great job. He's, he's promoted bands, and, he's, and he has his own band. Love his band, and uh, we were just talking about this when we first uh, when we were out there on by the stage, by the plaza stage, and just reflecting a little bit and saying, "Boy, we've come." <laughs> We've made some strides yeah. you know, from the very first. I remember my. I have a recording, a video recording of my very first outing as a band, and it's under lock and key. It's in a safe. <laughs> it's in a. It's in a bunker. <laughs> Nobody will ever see it again. Um, but I'm really proud of uh, of the progress that our bands, uh, respectively, have made. Jer. The Jir Project and my band, which was formerly known as uh, Saving Damsels, uh, we changed the name last year to Son of Webby, uh, just to kind of reflect a little bit of what I was learning from a personal perspective about our history, Navajo history, and then also kind of a, a macro level reflection on what's going on in Indian country. Uh, the same, gov- the same government that has been treating a Indi- indigenous nations badly is still the same government that still treats indigenous people that badly. So we've always written protest music about saving damsels, but in the last uh, two, three years, I've really focused on just writing stuff. Maybe it's catharsis. Maybe it's a way of just me getting it out. Because if I don't, then I get mad and I get angry. And there's, there's. Well, let me let me share a story just real quick. I went to a, a protest rally, and we were trapped inside a bank because we were we were protesting the banks because of their involvement in um, financing oil companies. And there's this guy, security guy, that wanted to was trying to trap us into the building. And I remember standing close to the door and then stopping him. He looked me straight in the eye and his intention was to lock us in for whatever his reasons were. And I pushed against him and pushed the door open so that everybody else could get out. And in a split second, I was just like, I was ready to engage him in a physical, physical manner. I've worked so many years to not go there. And so I, I, I had to write about that kind of stuff in order to get it out. Because otherwise, for me, it manifests in, in physically engaging yeah. people. I think that's the good thing about music, gives you that opportunity to express yourself, um, and us as musicians take a stand for what we believe in, um, you know, for, for what I do, I uh, have a family, I have two kids, um, and, you know, my message is is trying to be positive, and, and looking for, for them, to see the music as something to brighten up their day. Um, and then we have, you know, people that are, are, are fighting for a cause, and we have people that are, are sad because they have gone through a bad relationship or something, and we have other people that, you know, are just happy all the time, and they're just writing happy, happy songs. So 
there's there's certainly opportunity in, in, in the music, especially with native people to to speak their voice and you know talk about their culture or, or whatever they're feeling. And, and that, I think that's abroad what what music is about and the honesty when you're sharing that emotion and those feelings. Um, our audience will feel that, and, and that's what draws people in. And it's the honesty and, and the, the camaraderie, camaraderie, camaraderie of people, you know, uniting and, and coming together and, and celebrating uh, the beat, you know. And, and you, you hit right on it. There's you, you hear different beats, different rhythms, and that's where it all starts. It all starts with that drum, our heartbeat, whatever, you know. Um, However, we want to break it down to its smallest part, but that, that's what it is. It's the beat, and it sets a rhythm, and it draws people in. So music is a, an awesome, something that I've always been connected with, and you know, I'm looking forward to the next uh, next chapter. Not too long ago, we did a focus on Link Ray, which I kind of look at as, as like the first yeah. native musician to go out there and not only make a statement, but he actually got in Hollywood Bowl. He actually kind of was the first native musician to look at fame yeah. and to create a following. And then all of the British rockers came in and knocked him off. And but in a way, they kind of recognized him, but really as somebody that came before, but not really brought into the whole mainstream of music. And You've used the fuzz stone quite a bit in yeah. your music. So yeah. I can hear some of his influence uh, in your music on it. And you know, you have also the reggae influence that's in there. Yeah. And I think that is the jumping off point. It's hitting a chord <clears throat> more than just the native uh, audience, it's hitting a chord that's again starting into a mainstream type of audience and, and uh, you may disagree with me but I think uh, the rap music is just it's all old, old people rap <laughs> but now there's a new generation of social rappers we had this young lady here uh, Katrina, Katrina uh, oh, yeah, began yeah, Katrina's oh yeah, yeah. it's yeah. awesome yeah. you can feel the energy inside of her but yet she doesn't have the, the support, you know, she hasn't gone on the road and played in bars till yeah. 2 in the morning and So, fine. yeah, I, you know, we, we definitely have a lot of talent out there and, and you know, hip-hop, rap, it, it takes a certain genius to do that as well, um, to come out with words and lyrics on the moment uh, about any given topic, you know, that takes a lot of intelligence to do that. Um, you know, as far as people getting on the road, you know, that's a whole whole other entity. So you have your, your talent, your skill that you can do as a performer, but then you also have to be a business person and know how to uh, put your package together and take it to somebody that says, okay, uh, we want you to perform here and you're able to present and do this. And me and JJ were kind of talking about this too. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing to have talent, but... Uh, to be in the business, you know, you need you need talent, and you have to know the business side a little bit, and that's what we're trying to do. I think me and JJ realize that, and you know, we're trying to bring that to the community, and and bring them in these shows and, and treat them like professionals, yeah. and and tell them, you know, like let them experience what it's like to be in a, a professional venue, um, how to handle yourself, what to ask for when you're getting booked. And stuff like that so it's, it's a little bit of teaching and mentoring that we kind of take on I think when we do when we bring an artist on especially somebody that hasn't performed uh, at a professional venue or like you were saying they don't have that experience so uh, I think with through Native Guitars Tour through Rock the Nine that's a venue where we're, we're trying to pass on and I think that's something we get through our, our upbringing you know as Natives you know we pass on what we know to the next generation and I think, you know, that's where I'm at in my life, is wanting to pass that on, wanting to share that. And it's, it's not about, you know, success or, or money. It's about, you know, doing your duty as, as you know, a person at this uh, place in my life. That's, you know, I feel that's my obligation to give back to, to our, our community. There's 
there's so many times when you're when you're going out and checking out bands, and all of a sudden you hear something that's a little bit different and something that's um, not the same as maybe what you're doing, and you get excited about it. I know I felt that way about uh, when I first heard uh, Interstate, and uh, and at the time. Um, the gentleman from Interstate, and uh, they asked if we could uh, do some shows together. So I booked a series of like two or three shows, and we had a lot of fun just uh, just enjoying uh, the road together. Uh, a few shows, and it's the the thing that really struck it struck home with me was that uh, as as an established band, it's 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 important, like you're saying, to to gather other folks, especially if they ask for help. Um, I've been, you know, from my band, I've, I've had a lot of guys email me, message me and saying, hey, how do I do this? Or can we share the same uh, bill with you? Or those kinds of things. And... Uh, I don't know, this is my process, Jerry. I don't know if this is different with you. I didn't immediately go and, and check out what they're doing and whether or not I feel like they have what it takes to, to go into a venue and, and, and perform. Is that, do you kind of filter that out or, or is it just kind of like, yeah, come on in, let's do this? Yeah, no, I, I think I, I definitely do some, there's a screening process yeah. you have to do. Um, because one, you know, we're trying to establish a professional bit, uh, um, show, a professional yeah. show, yeah, professional yeah. avenue for, for artists in order to maintain that, you know, if you bring somebody on stage, you got to make sure they're prepared, um, at a certain level. So even though they may not have this huge knowledge of, of the business side, if they can perform and uh, have demonstrated they can do that then you can bring them to that stage and, and have them do that and then show them the business in the background so you definitely some screening that's involved and it is hard like like JJ was saying you can't tell everybody yes because not everybody's at that level and uh, I definitely keep in touch with all those people that do contact me and I'm sure JJ does too yeah. and when they're at that level that's when we bring them in one of the things that <clears throat> Boy and I have discussed is that like Albuquerque now is like where Muscle Shoals was. All of this talent, all of these musicians coming in, but what Muscle Shoals had was like a a, a studio of musicians that would come together, create, innovate, and then all of a sudden one would get a hit here and another one get a hit there, and slowly it kind of built up. Yeah. And what's kind of missing is the studio structure to make it happen where somebody could come in, plug in their guitar or drums or whatever instrument yeah. and start playing, even though there's an anonymity of, of that person within yeah. the... And what what are your thoughts about looking at a studio type of structure for Albuquerque? I, go ahead, JJ. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> There's a bunch of uh, really good studios in Albuquerque and Santa Fe, and uh, I'll plug the one that we generally use is well, used for our last two albums is uh, Frogville uh, Studio here in Albuquerque. Um, one of the things about starting a studio is um, it's important, really important to have really good recording gear, and then the other thing is to have a space that is conducive to creativity. And then the last piece, well, maybe it's not the last piece, but another piece is having an engineer or a producer in there saying, yeah, that's good. Now, try it this way. Or even, depending on how secure the musicians are that are coming into the studio, having a producer say, no, that, that is really bad. You shouldn't do that right there. And taking it out. Um, Bill Palmer is really good with that finding that range between okay I'm just turning knobs I'm engineer guy no creative uh, input 
you can ask him to say, I want you to put a producer hat on and tell us what is not good. And he will tell you that. Uh, Jerry and I have both recorded at that studio. And I really believe that that's uh, an exemplar. That's a really good example of how to do it well. Um, am I... No, no, Am that's, I that's going down the right track. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, I, I think what uh, you know, Boy had had come to me with, and you know, we had had some ideas of a studio. And to me, it seems more like uh, creating uh, an avenue for artists, native artists, to come in and just kind of get together when they're they're in the area and just kind of produce. Um, you know, a show, kind of like, uh, you know, this like, you know, get together. We have all this, these, ta this talent in the room. Let's let's get it recorded. And uh, but yeah, you definitely there's there's more to that. Like JJ was saying, you need you need engineers, you need producers, you need equipment and gear and stuff like that. But definitely something I would like to see come to fruition. And uh, maybe you know, one of these days when me and JJ get that opportunity to to open up a studio, that's Maybe uh, our, our next level to take something on and, and, and build that and, and build those opportunities for people to come. Being in. being yeah. being producers and saying, okay, try this. Yeah. Or that's great. Yeah. yeah. Our next big gig <laughs> is the uh, State Fair Indian uh, Village. Yeah. Are you all going to be performing there? Yeah. 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 So we uh, Jared Project has. Uh, I think we're there on September 8th, it's the first Friday. We'll be at the main stage, uh, I think from three to four to five or three to four, and then we'll be at in the village at six o'clock. And then the following Friday on the 15th, uh, we have a similar schedule there, 6, 6 p.m. at uh, the Indian Village. Wow. I'm pretty excited for that. We're gonna be there the weekends when I'm enjoying the week. It's just not enough there to yeah, the yeah. broadcast empty space of people sitting there. And I, I'm not sure about the Son of Wealthy schedule. Um, yeah, we're playing that first Saturday, I believe, and then the following Thursday, both on the Indian Village stage. Okay, yeah, so. so we'll have a chance to meet that. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. I want to thank you for, for having us out today, and uh, it was a privilege, and... Uh, Hopefully this reaches some people and is helpful. And uh, if anybody wants to reach me, my name is Jer Anderson. Uh, you can reach me at nativeguitarstour at gmail.com or uh, visit the Jer Project uh, .com site. If you want any information on the band, we have tour dates, we have photos, we have videos. Um, but yeah, music all the time, 24/7. Yeah, Son of Wealthy, we have our website as well, and then Facebook, Twitter, all the social media sites, and uh, yeah, just punch in uh, the name, and uh, you'll find either one of us, and uh, have an online presence. Of course, spell out Sons of Weirdy slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Son, like S-O-N, um, Son of Wealthy, Wealthy is H-W-E-E-L-D-I. H W E E L D I. Yeah. yeah. Try to oh. try to say that one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let alone three, right? Yeah. Yeah. It is important that you know, even though we record, but our sound is so crummy. But we're out there, yeah, putting out a message. We're not <clears throat> out there to really provide entertainment per se. So it's important for them to be able to download what you have. So it benefits you uh, think what we are really is PR we're, we're showing what you're doing but if you listen to our recording quality you know it, it's not good I mean but we are getting people to recognize native music genre which is really what our intent is yeah and we really appreciate that it's, yeah it's, it's a big big help definitely helps us in, in many ways. Yeah, just to be able to uh, point uh, a potential venue at uh, a video that you guys have taken. I, I know I've done that and I've gotten 
uh, a gig or two based on the, uh, our performance yeah, at, uh, <laughs> that you guys reported at IAIA. So, yeah, so that's great. So. Okay. We got my five minute uh, wrap over here. <laughs> and uh, well, thank you all for coming in. Thank we'll you. See you in several weeks. Keep it strong and keep it rocking. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>